Hello, this is the Roland System 8 and it's Roland's next plug-out synthesizer. It has spaces for three plug-outs and two of those have already got the Jupiter 8 and the Juno 106. That comes with the purchase of actually buying the synthesizer. But you can move those to one side on an SD card or something and use those plug-out spaces for additional sounds and synths that Roland comes out with. Now, I'm going to just take this part and just show you what's going off underneath the hood so screwdriver time now you can purchase wooden end cheeks or aluminium end cheeks for this but uh, they cost 50 pounds which I think is a little bit expensive and uh, I guess that's to try and give it a bit more of a retro look but personally I have no preference between digital synths or analog synths. It's all about the sound that it produces. I don't really care if it produces it in an analog way or digital way. But, uh, you know, some people, they prefer analog or digital. Me, I don't really give a damn. It's down to the sound that it produces. And this produces a pretty good sound. So I'm going to speed this up and get this opened up and show you around inside. All the screws are out and there's just two ribbon connectors down here, or rather one ribbon connector and a multi-cable connector that you have to do undo at the bottom here to lift this whole top panel off. So everything in the top panel is connected just by these two. So I'm going to put that to one side for the minute. That's all basically just the control gear on the top panel. And here I shall uh, just zoom the camera down to this area because this is the main synth just here. So this looks like a, another new chip. It's obviously the analog circuit behavior chip, but it's the next level up. This is the BMC chip which uh, I can't find any information online at all about this. So this is possibly the analog circuit behavior times two. Who knows? I haven't got a clue. Uh, one thing I do notice on this board is there's a lot of spaces which are unpopulated, meaning there's no components there. And it's as if this board, which it says system eight here, it's as if this board was designed and then they decided mm, we don't really need anything here or here. We don't need these connectors and we don't need these connectors anymore. But they kept the board. And uh, I find this often in modern day things nowadays where there's spaces for components and there's no components there. I wonder why they were designed and yet not utilized. Anyway, as you see, there's three of these BMC chips. Uh, one moment. It's behavior modeling core, apparently. That's all the information I could get on it. Now, here is some memory again, and this is integrated silicon solutions ink memory, and that's 128 meg SD RAM. So there's three lots of that on there. And then all the usual little components for your MIDI with your opto isolators. And this has an SD card, so there's a few components for chatting information backwards and forwards to that. What's on the other side of this board? I don't know. I'm going to unscrew it and just have a look on the other side because, I don't know, it doesn't look like there's a lot in this, although it does do a lot. So I'm going to unscrew this board and flip it over. Just have a look underneath it. Okay, the under underside of this, I don't know if I should unplug this. No, I think I'll leave that plugged in there and just try and manipulate it to flip it over. Uh, right, I've got to move the camera over or unplug it. No, I don't. I'll just slide the keyboard across. Okay, this is the underside, obviously. And the only major component underneath there is a bit more SD RAM. And again, there's lots of components missing. I mean,. <laughs> What would this synthesizer have been if all these components were added? I don't know. It's already a good synth, but there's, you know, this is space for more memory and uh, a lot more connectors for things. 
who knows maybe there's going to be the system 16 coming out next uh but yeah there you go not a lot to see on the underside apart from a little bit more memory another tiny chip there and a few surface mount components so i'll just put this back where it belongs i am wearing an anti-static wrist strap while i'm doing this to try and save the life of this synthesizer because you can actually create damage with just the static electricity that your body produces so if you're going to open things up like this you've got to take as many precautions as you can right i'll uh, screw this together and move over to the next board now there's a great big space here in between and i kind of think well you know this is the power brick surely they could have put it inside the machine and just had an iec socket on the back i don't know maybe uh it produces electromagnetism which would interfere with the rest of the keyboard but you know you could have uh, put the power supply inside the actual keyboard there's plenty of space there anyway moving over to the next board here we go so the board on the left there's the typical four double five six ad uh that's a high current audio op amp there and these little guys here i really haven't got a clue what they are uh, these are analog multiplexers and uh this i haven't got a clue it's a roland rs1 trouble oh three double six nine two don't know what it is but where it's situated is where the uh, keyboard connector comes in so i'm assuming it's something to do with the keying matrix of that uh, on the back you've got the control voltage gate and trigger and then there's the pedals and the audio input audio output and headphones and other than that it's just good old generic bog standard capacitors transistors and resistors just like the good old days but uh, yeah this is the jackboard assembly and there's nothing underneath there to look at so moving on ah wait before I move on now earlier I said it's a pity the keyboard didn't have aftertouch now the aftertouch is normally a ribbon that goes underneath the keys so when you press the key down if you push it a little bit harder it changes the resistance in a strip so I'm wondering if that's what this unpopulated area is here because this has connector number six but there's nothing connected to it but that looks suspiciously like the sort of connector that you would push one of those uh, ribbons into that normally goes underneath the keys so maybe the idea of having aftertouch uh, was implemented at first implement is the wrong word because that normally means you've actually done it so let's say maybe the idea of having a, a ribbon connector was thought about but it wasn't actually done so i don't know there's even a space for a variable pot on there as well so i don't know maybe that little area there would have been for an aftertouch but they didn't put it on for some reason i don't know so this is the back of all the controllers all the potentiometers and leds and displays etc this is where all the faders are above the uh, bendy bar and uh yeah what you've got on the back of here basically is lots of tiny little chips which gather the information as to where the pots have been adjusted to and then that sends everything along to this little microcontroller this is a stm which is st microcontrollers and it's an arm 32-bit cortex m3 microcontroller so all the information will end up here and then this turns it into digital language and sends it off on the ribbon cable to the synthesizer uh, other than that there's nothing else really to look at inside here because everything's basically just digital pot readings and yeah chips to turn the leds on and off and control the uh display this is the ribbon that goes to the small two-line display that's on the front of it so yeah basically everything's done through this little microcontroller there and sends its information off to tell it what's happening on the front panel when you're twisting all those pots around 
So if you decide to buy one of the end cheeks, there's three screws in the side and those screws have got nothing to do with holding the keyboard together at all. They are already nice long screws so that if you buy a wooden end cheek or an aluminium end cheek, you just unscrew these three screws on the side and then screw the end on. Right, time to put it all back together again. So it's nice and easy to put put back together and take apart this is and just two plugs two connectors and that's all you need so there you go hopefully that is it and now the big test it all seems to be working again thankfully and that was just a quick look inside the uh, system 8 from Roland it was interesting to see those larger chips in there uh, the ACB technology has advanced already into bigger chips but then it would have to of course because you can use the system 8 with one of the plug outs at the same time on this synthesizer you know you can have the system 8 in your lower and uh, Jupiter 8 in an upper or do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with it so it needs to be more powerful and it certainly is more powerful so i uh, hope that was a interesting look for you in there and i'll get around to making another video as soon as possible thanks for all your help and uh if possible if you can click the subscribe button or thumbs up if you think it was worth it thanks very much all the best bye bye mm -hmm.